Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video which should be again a short one still I'm working on my commercial project and the deadline is looming so a lot of hours have to go into that. Now I thought about stuff that we can cover and I think I found something that is in Octane that not a lot of you know about and it crept in there a couple of versions ago. So let's grab your coffee and let's have a look at fields. The scene isn't very complicated, so let's start this up from scratch by creating a landscape and then two objects, one HDRI and one texture object. Set the texture environment to black and also make it only visible, so nothing has to be lit by it. Then go to the HDRI and drag in a HDRI. We are going to use Maxim Ross's HDRI yet again. Let's rename and sort this. And here we go. If fields ring a bell for you, then this is probably because of Cinema 3D. So let's look at this first. Let's say we want to have a spherical shape on our landscape that we can move around. Probably the best way to get a Cinema 4D field into an Octane shader is by using a vertex map. So let's go to the landscape object and create one by hitting Shift C and then Vert. We go with a vertex map here. And inside of the vertex map, we can use a field. So let's use a spherical field here. And now we can see that we have a spherical option that we can move around. To see that in our shader, we first have to create a shader. So let's go to materials and choose the diffuse material because this is not a shading tutorial, but a fields tutorial. And inside the shader, let's go with an attribute texture here. Here we go. And then we need to call it the same as the vertex map, which is called <laughs> vertex map. So copy that in, make sure this is set to float as we are not going with a vertex color and then assign it to the landscape. And now we can see we have the spherical field show up in our shader. So far, so good. Let's talk about the drawbacks of this method. So the keen eyed among you have already spotted it. Basically, we are substituting a vertex map to get to the shader result, but the vertex map is of course reliant on the count of vertices in our scene. So if we down that to, for example, 20 by 20, we get a very coarse result. The best option would be to have the fields accessible in the Octane shader directly, so we don't have to substitute a vertex map here. Unfortunately, this isn't possible, but fortunately, Octane has its own fields that we can use. So let us look at this next. I reset the scene to its initial state. So let's go and add some fields from Octane. To do so, we need to scroll down here quite a lot. Here we go, and there are field textures here. So let's go with the same shape that we used before, the spherical field, and let's drag it out and black it into the diffuse. And almost nothing's happening here. This has a lot to do with the project scale. So if we go to our project scale, you can see mine is in millimeter and my landscape is around 60 by 60 centimeters. And the fall off radius in Octane is always measured in meters. Since we are dealing with radii and not diameter, let's go with the half of 60, which is 30, so 0.3. And now we can see our spherical field in action. Let's make it the same size as our field in Cinema 4D, which was a hundred millimeters in radius, so 0.1 here. And if we look at it, now we can see we don't have those artifacts as this is purely shader driven. Now, the thing here is that you cannot control it right now because we don't have any gizmos in our viewport or anywhere else. So whenever we do a texture field of any sort, the origin is its home and we need to pull it off from the origin somehow, at least if we want to move it around, of course. And this is where the circle closes a bit because you all know what I'm going to do next, especially if you watch my tutorials on noises. So what we are going to do is go to the spherical field and create a projection and therefore a XYZ to UVW projection. Here we go. So now what we can do is move the texture around by the XYZ coordinates here. And we are moving it through the plane right now, but we can just move it wherever we want. 
Now, this isn't very intuitive, so there's another way we can do that. If you watch closely, you might have noticed that there is a link field here, and it does exactly what you think it does. If we create a null, for example, and link it in here, we created ourselves a gizmo where we can move the null and the field is moving with it. There's one more thing we need to do to make this work more universally. Right now, this only works because our landscape with the material applied is in the world origin. So if I go to the landscape and move it, you can see the field is moving with it, despite the null where the field is actually linked to is staying put. The fix here is very simple. We need to go to our texture projection, scroll up, go to the coordinate space and set it from object space to world space. And now if we move the landscape, you can see the right behavior occurs. Alrighty, let's go through the different options we have here real quick. So let's click on the node and we can change that from spherical, for example, to angular. And this is very self-explanatory. So we have an angle fall off that can be set to zero. So we have a very hard limit here. And then we can adjust the angle with the lower slider. Of course, this is still bound to our null object. So if we rotate that around, we can adjust the angle of the angle. The next one in the list is planar. And you might know this as a linear field in Cinema 4D. This is looking all white because of two reasons. One, the fall off distance is very large again. And then we are using the wrong angle because this is aligned to the Y axis for some reason. So if we move that down 90 degrees, you can see it starts at the null and then goes to black at 20 centimeters. And of course, it follows the orientation of your null again. And last but not least, maybe the most interesting one is shape. And this doesn't work as easily as the others, so I dedicate a whole chapter to this. For this chapter, I made a text object called shape. And for shape fields, we don't need a projection anymore. So let's delete this and let's also delete the null for now. So let's connect this again to the diffuse. And you might think, well, this is easy. There's a shape input. Just select the text here and nothing is happening. The reason is that fields are not working with objects or polygons, but with signed distance fields. So we need to convert our shape here into a signed distant field. If you have worked yourself through the foam tutorial, the upcoming process is very similar in that our object needs an octane object tag. Let me find it, extensions object tag, here we go. Then go to particle rendering, but instead of mesh to volume, we're going with mesh to SDF, which stands for signed distance field. So basically what we are getting is the volume builder and volume measure in one step and in render time. But as you might notice, the text here is a little bit coarse, so it has some rough edges. To mitigate that, what we could do is decrease the voxel size here to one. And if it's not updating, there's a little trick here. You can go to main and then force updates. And this should now update whenever you do something in the object. What you could do to not waste any resources is leave the text as a voxel size of four and then duplicate it and use your polygon text to be visible in your camera while the field here is using the signed distance field text. Let's actually rename that. Here we go. This should be already working with other objects, but for our text, we somehow need a connect object. So let's create a connect and move also the tag there. Also in our shape layer, let's link the connect here. Here we go. And now we can see something. Why this displays wide again has two reasons. One, the fall off distance is very large. So let's set it to 10 centimeters, but still it's displaying wide. The other reason has something to do with the data structure we get our distance from. So this is the signed distance field, and we are only calculating borders up to three voxels outside of the space here. So if we go and set it to one centimeter, we get our gradient. So 10 centimeters is further away than three voxels. So if we go to 10 centimeter again, we need more voxels. So let's give it 30 voxels. And now we get our gradient as expected. Be aware that the voxel size here matters. So if I half that, then those 30 voxels aren't enough anymore. 
since we have made them smaller and they are not reaching to 10 centimeters again. So we have to also increase the border outside again to make it work. As a last step, let's do what we did in our intro and introduce a gradient. So let's go with an octane gradient in between here. And then we have a preset or I use the preset. So let's go with this one here. Here we go. And now we have a nicely colored shape. All right, this was already it. I hope you can take something with you and realize the enormous potential that lies within those setups. I used it a couple of times by now, for example, to reveal things in a texture or create rust eating into an object. Basically, your creativity is the limit. If you do something nice with it, let me know on social media, share it with me, link it with me. That would be really cool to see. And now, without further ado, let's thank those people who made this video possible. Obviously, my Patreons. Especially my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen, Just a Frickin, and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 Euro tier subscribers, for D Thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Alihan Gekkefa, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, DBMD, Erbe Plus Academy, George Luna, Graham Bagnell, Harish Pavaskar, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Ludger, Muradan Axos, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quok an Dang, Random Capibara, Raiko, Renato Marquez, Reshock, Shiro2049, Terry Wayne Ranson and Yasin Rupp. Thank you all so very much for making it possible to produce those videos that you all enjoy. Welcome to the end of the line. In the last couple of videos, not a lot of people have posted emoticons from the end here. Maybe I have to drop some hints within the video. Anyway, for those of you who made it here, thank you so much for sticking with me that long. Let's post a whole emoticon to symbolize the spherical fields in the comments down below if you want to show your support. Other than that, I wish you a fantastic rest of the weekend, a great start into next week and happy shaping. Bye.